Hi everyone and welcome back. So we've got another problem to try out. A little bit more complex this time. You see we have a distributed load here at the end. We've got an applied load, applied moment, and this little cantilever portion over here. Woo! Lots of craziness. Lots of craziness. There we go. Penis malfunction. And we're going to use the graphical method once again to solve this. Now, most of the work is just going to be simply saying, well, hey, what are these reaction forces? Um, the rest I'll just do with you on the end by hand. So first off, we got to solve for the reaction forces, which aren't that hard. I mean, these problems, I'm not going to be doing anything that's angled. That just throws all of our equations off. Um, so we'll have things that are always perpendicular to the surface. So with that, I'm going to use my equations of equilibrium to solve for those reaction forces. And I get, well, some moments around point A. This moment is a free vector. It moves over here with us. So I'll get 25 kilonewton meters. If you're wondering, well, since it's a free vector, I can act like it applies anywhere for my shear force and moment diagrams. That you can't do. It has to apply there for them. Um, but for this, when we're solving equilibrium, we're taking the whole the entire beam as a whole. And so I can act like it moved anywhere. Okay, so I have 25 minus 15 times 8 minus this distributed over here, which is 7 times 3, times the distance to that centroid, which is going to be 12 plus half of this, so 13 and a half, My, or sorry, plus dy times 12. If I do that, I solve and I get that dy is going to be 31.54 kilonewtons. Okay. And then I use my sum of forces in the y direction, taking all these forces into account. The moment doesn't do anything. Not important for here. And I solve and I get a y is going to be 4.46 kilonewtons. Joy of a cantilever beam. Now, with that in mind, let's think about how this is going to look. So I'm going to do it once, like over here with you, just get the visuals, and we'll go from there. So remember, for our shear force diagram, we always start at zero. Start at zero, and then right here, this first load, we're going to jump up 4.4. I'm going to say, yeah, I'll say 4.46. Right there. And I stay flat. I stay flat until I hit another, another shear force. Some other force. That moment doesn't exist right here. Don't even see it. I keep on going, I keep on going until I reach this point right here. So I've now gone a distance of 8. And I drop down 15. So 4.46 from 15, that's going to be negative 11.54. Okay. And I stay constant because there's nothing else applied until I get to dy. It's going to jump me up 31.54. Woo! So 31.54, I'm going to make this a little bit simpler myself. Actually, that's actually perfect. And I'm going to go up to 20. Okay, so this is 20. And then I have this distributed load. Sorry, 20. That should be 21. It should be 21. Um, oh, well. 20 ish. I say 21 because I math's gone up somewhere. Um, and once we do that, we're going to then apply that distributed load, which since it's a constant load, it will decrease linearly all the way back down to zero. Okay, wonderful, wunderbar, bravissima. And with that, we have it. We are done, it's gorgeous. So our moment diagram is gonna be, you know, using this as its slope. So since this is a constant but positive value, I'm gonna have a constant but positive slope. And then suddenly, I'm going to reach that 25 kilonewtons. Now, what does that do? Well, it is counterclockwise. So, since it's counterclockwise, it's going to do what? We're going to drop down. Now, you're like, wait a minute. Wait, whoa, whoa, what, what? No, 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 no. You said if the moment goes on the top, makes a smiley face thing, then it's, you know, it's positive. And, you know, I get that this can be really confusing here. Um, 
I'll stand by what I said for earlier. If the moment's gonna be turning it this way, positive, and typically we consider um, counterclockwise moments positive, but in these shear moment diagrams, it's going to be negative. Um, ways to show that to you. Mm. It's not really as easy to show it here. But the big thing to think about is this. This force right here, this shear force, you know, I have it in a po constantly positive line right here. Okay. Goodness. So if it's a positive 4.46 this entire time, that means if I cut it anywhere, it's pointing up, which is going to be clockwise. And this is once again saying, okay, that's causing a clockwise moment. I'm applying a clockwise moment. So why? Why is this still kind of clockwise? It's because this is not our bending moment. This is an applied moment on the outside. Um, and in that case, it's going to have the opposite effect. It's one of those weird things. It's in your textbook, so please check it out. Um, but when it's applied like this, it's going to be negative. Okay, A clockwise moment that's applied will be positive. A counterclockwise one will be negative for your diagrams. Now, when you cut it, when you cut it, and if you're looking at this side, then yes, a counterclockwise moment will be positive. Okay, so that in mind, the way you can think about it is that that little section is having to resist that applied moment, and so it has to do the opposite of it. And so since that's counterclockwise, it has to be clockwise. I know it's not necessarily the perfect analogy, I'm just trying to give you something to go with. Okay, so I've gone up and then I drop down. And the thing is though, my slope is still constant, so I continue up. And then I have that 15 kil or I had dropped down here. Okay, let's see. And I have a constant slope, but it's negative, so I go down. And then I have a constant, or sorry, a linearly decreasing but positive slope, which would look like this. Now, this picture is nice and all, but I didn't give you any of the values. But you'd have to do by taking some integrals. So this first one is simply the integral from here to here. It's 4 times 4.46. It's a nice little box. That gives us 17.83. And then I apply that 25 kilonewton per meter load, in, or moment, and it drops down by 25. I then increase, and as you can see, I didn't actually have it to scale because I didn't cross the x-axis the right points. Um, but that's, I was just drawing it freehand, so give me a break there. And we're going to keep on increasing at the same rate. These slopes are the same because they're coming from the same shear force. It doesn't change, we just had an applied moment that caused that discontinuity. And at this point, since our shear force is negative, our slope becomes negative. And at this point, Adjust back and our slope is going to become positive again. So it's positive and decreasing. Um, this is positive and decreasing. This is positive and increasing. Okay? That's the difference between, you know, this being your shear force and this being your shear force. So be careful with that when you're drawing. Okay, so that's enough for this time. Thank you all for listening, and I'll see you later. Bye bye.